PAC agenda this morning. So just wanted to you know go over some some things so you know what is going to be expected of this call. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about distance education basics. We're going to be talking about taking care of business. Um, how do you log into your account? Um, what type of information um, you need to know in order to start your classes? We're going to talk a little bit about email technology support. Also, we have um, people from the Office of Financial Aid that are going to be talking a little bit about financial aid and how to get that process completed. Um, and we'll also have a representative from Distance Education to talk to you a little bit about textbooks and your student ID. We, we will continue to talk a little bit about support service and some services that we bring to you, such as the library as well as career services. Finally, we're concluding the, the meeting um, with representatives from the College of Health Sciences Advising Office as well as Dr. Raymond, the chair of the program, who will be giving you some tips. So we're going to get started with Dr. Terry Rawls. He is the Executive Director of the Division of Educational Outreach and Summer Programs and also the Director of Distance Dr. Rawls. Good morning, Juanes. Thank you very much. I'm just going to take a minute here. You know, I was thinking about this uh, event this morning. In 1985, I decided it was time for me to go back to school. Of course, back in those days, I was a department head in a hospital. I had to leave that job. I had to sell the house uh, and become a student again. Go on the campus every day uh, and try to make ends meet. So thank goodness for online education today. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for all of you. And you're embarking on an adventure that is going to change your life. There are three keys I want to give you. Three, I've been doing online education a long time. There are three things I want you to think about. First, you need to prioritize your future. You're going to need to put aside time. You're going to have to say no to family and friends. It's going to get kind of tough, but you have to keep in mind that this is about changing your life. Second, make sure you set aside a little bit of time to have some fun. Not all the time, but enough to keep life interesting. And finally, the last, the last thing that we need you to do is we need you to ask for help. If you get stuck, call one of your classmates. Call an instructor. Call Kelly at the library. We're here to help, and we want to help you be successful. Best of luck, and welcome to Appalachian State University. Juanes, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Rawls. Um, great advice. Uh, for the students, and I also use those myself, so thank you for reminding me of those. Um, all right, so let's get started with um, a little bit of expectations of students. Um, you are entering a completely online program, um, and as an Appalachian student, you will be uh, required to follow the same conduct and integrity code for any other student at Appalachian State. So even though you're not necessarily on campus or we might have the opportunity to see you face to face all the time, we do ask that we are in a professional environment and so you uh, are going to be expected to conduct yourself in a pro professional way. Um, you are almost likely working professionals so you understand that uh, dynamic. Um, you also are responsible for completing the, the program requirements on time. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about what those are and what you should expect. Also, um, we're going to be giving you a lot of information this morning. Um, I have, for your convenience, I'm going to show you where this information has been stored for you. You can access this information at any time. You also are going to have access to this recording as well. So you can always go back and if you forgot something or there's something that it wasn't very clear, you have all the materials in front of you to make this happen. And finally, um, Dr. Rawls recommended to ask for help. And I would say also ask questions. So if there's something that you're not really clear about, you have a program manager uh, for your particular um, 
program, that, that's me. Uh, my name is Juanes Ramirez and I have been working with each of you in some sort of capacity. We also have a great team of people who are also um, in this call today, but some of them are not in the call. And so we do have a huge group of people who have your best interests. Um, finally, you also have an academic advisor, um, a person who's going to be helping you anyway um, with your academic career. So, so it's going to take a, a team to, to help you to go through the program. Um, and I hope you do take advantage of all the opportunities that we have here um, at Appalachian for you as an online student. So let's talk a little bit about the components of the RN2BSM program. Um, the RN2BSM program requires 124 hours of graduation purposes. You will need 124 hours to graduate. This, um, the 124 hours are, com um, are composed by 64 hours of lower division coursework or these are the courses that we were working together in order to get you admissible to the program. So all of those courses you completed um, in a diploma or um, associate degree of nursing, those are the courses that we were talking about. And some of you have been working with me on meeting specifically coursework. So those are the ones that we're talking about. Um, you are expected to have all the lower division completed prior to entering the program. Uh, if you move to the left of the page, you have the upper division nursing courses. And these are the courses that we're going to be delivering to you. It's going to be 30 hours of nursing courses. Um, and then an additional 30 hours will be awarded to you when you complete your third uh, term of the program. And this is because of your clinical competency. You're going to be getting credit for that. Um, Dr. Raymond will talk to you a little bit about the non-traditional clinical involved in this program, but you will get 30 hours um, of Appalachian credit. So you, you're getting a total of 60 hours with Appalachian. You're only paying for 30 hours, which I think is an excellent um, you know, deal that we have. Um, All right, so just here, a little bit different setup. So your program of study depends on your lower division coursework, your nursing coursework, um, and all of that will hopefully will be 124 hours that you need to graduate, okay? I just wanna stress that 124 hours required for graduation. All right. Some of you have been working with me on completing your last courses. All the courses before enrollment, so everything that you completed over the summer, those transcripts need to go to the Office of Admissions. If you have finished coursework and we don't have a final transcript, we ask that you go ahead and request this as soon as possible. That way we can delete any holes that you might have and also it will help you to keep our records updated as much as possible. So the first thing, if, if you have not submitted official transcripts with your last courses, they do need to be sent to the Office of Admissions so we can complete the admission process. Any transcripts of course were completed after enrolling, they would come directly to the Transfer Articulation Office and they will be the ones putting in your record and working with the College of Health Sciences advising the office to make sure that you meet all the requirements for the program. So um, just make sure you keep an eye on this. Courses for the major, there's going to be, like I said, a 30, 30 hours, and it's going to touch different things on the program. You're going to have information about informatics, assessment, uh, nursing care communities, uh, leadership management, and research. So um, Dr. Raymond will talk to you a little bit about these courses and what is expected of you from some of these courses. This is your tentative fall schedule. The great thing about being a distance education student is that we set up the schedule for you. You do have to register every semester yourself, 
we will send a reminder to letting you know that registration will be opened and you will need to register yourself like you did now um, and so you'll have 30 hours three semesters fall spring and summer summer is a very important term because you are going to be uh, finishing your program so we just ha we have to make sure that you apply for graduation uh, in the spring and then your commencement happens in December so I just want to clarify those two things again uh, graduation happens after you complete your course of study your program of study that's when you actually graduate you completed all the program requirements so you need to apply for that in the spring you will get information in your Appalachian email so that is very important that you check very um, often um, I would say at least a few times a day but um, you know it's something that you do need to check um, and then commencement and pinning ceremony will occur for your cohort in December so that's when you actually will walk uh, for pinning and um, and for commencement um, festivities okay all right we will deliver each course to you once there is a precise delivery of the nursing program courses so you must take those courses when they're available to you if for some reason um, you are unable to proceed and take a course you would have to take that course with the next cohort the year after um, so I recommend that you stick to your cohort schedule it is prescribed and we will be offering all the courses that you need to finish by summer 2017 okay this is again a little bit of information about graduation you will be applying for graduation in the spring via AppleNet so AppleNet is uh, we'll talk a little bit about AppleNet but that's where you have access to your classes uh, to registration student accounts um, so that's where you would be completing that application commencement will be in December um, and I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that because we only offer the 30 hours um, our students in this program are not eligible to graduate with honors since the honor college requires a minimum of 48 hours to graduate with honors so I, I'm sorry about this it's just their policy that they have at this time all right so let's practice I, I want to show you uh, what all of those things look like the first thing I recommend is if you can bookmark distance.upstate.edu that is the main um, website for distance education we will be changing a little bit in the near future but um, it's going to look a little bit different but all the information will be there um, on the top of your page you will see distance education class schedule so you will see this for each semester right now we are in the fall 16 so for those of you who have not registered yet this is where you actually will have access to that if you look at undergraduate schedule right here and click on that you are the online nursing RN to BSN new fall 16 cohort and this is important that you remember that because all your classes are going to be listed under the online nursing RN to BSN new fall 16 if I select that I'm going to come to the undergraduate schedule selected for your program as you can see you're going to see a CRN code, code, uh, code which is a unique identifier for the course you'll see the course number the section right here you see the title when the classes start when the class is supposed to finish and of course it is online you're gonna see here the amount of hours as well as your instructor okay so you'll see several sections of the same class and this is to accommodate all the students that we have in the RN to BSN program for this 
sections for this year. Okay, so you would just register for one of one section, and then again you will register for one of the next course, nursing. 3011 Concepts of Professional Nursing, and then you register for the last course, Nursing 3021 Health Assessment. Okay, so this is how you have access to your schedule every semester. This code right here is the CRN code, which is the unique identifier. You sh you would need this code in order to register for that class. That's the code that you're going to be typing in in order to register. Okay. Let's go back a little bit. All right, so there's also some important information in this page. You will have an academic calendar. You're going to see university policies and procedures, tuition and fees information, registration, billing, and grade information. If you, always, if you forget how to register, registration instructions are always provided there. And then if you need access to the bookstore link, this is where you get access to that, okay? So most of you have been working in the prospective student tab. Now we're going to be working on the, the enrolled student tab since you are an enrolled student of Appalachian. Um, in this page you have information from orientation through graduation. So if you ever need anything, most likely is going to be here in this particular um, page, um, let's log, log into your program. So your academic program, learn more, undergraduate orientation and program information, learn more, and you're going to be looking for your nursing program, nursing RN to BSN. I'm going to click there. It's going to have Dr. Kathleen Raymond, department chair, email right there in case you have any questions about the academic piece of the program. And then if you click Fall 16 Cohort, which is all of you, you'll have access to this presentation, a checklist that I have created for you. If you are like me and like to check things off, you can start using this checklist. Let's pull it up and see what it looks like. All right, so today you can actually, you if you have ordered your books, you can check that off. You can review the technology requirements in case you're interested in knowing what type of uh, technology do I need or what type of computer. Um, I encourage you to check your Appalachian email every day as you learn and AppleNet as you learn. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about this, but this is the platform that we use for your courses. This is where you take your courses. And then your AppleNet account, that's where you register for class. Um, so these are some things to do before class, some things to do the first week of class, and then during the class, end of the course, and program completion. So this is going to guide you through the program from the beginning to the end. I also have uh, what is called a distance education student guide. This is basically everything that we're covering today, but in a different format. This is actually something that you can do on your own, um, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So this is the distance education student guide for this year, but everything we're going to be talking today, you have access to it right here. So. Um, Buckley is going to talk a little bit about financial aid, so if you need more information about financial aid, page 14 will be that. Um, career services, library services, um, disability services, everything is going to be here, okay? All right. Um, this is the recordings. Your recording will be here, and then I'll provide a little bit of remi a reminder of your require program requirements, major requirements, as well as cohort schedule, and then on the bottom of the page you have access to all the people here who um, are able to assist you um, on regards to academic or logisticals or even your advisor is there as well. So all the information that you need, phone numbers, emails are there. Okay. Um, Let's see. 
Okay, so we are enroll students. Academic program orientation. Okay. All right, so this is all the information that you need to know about um, distance education. Um, I do suggest that you do, if you haven't checked your email, that you do that as soon as possible. Also, that any communication with Appalachian personnel, that you use your Appalachian email. And also, in order to help us to speed up the process, if you don't mind sharing your banner ID, that will help us speed up the process a lot. So um, let's talk a little bit about taking care of business. Emery, can you help us to take care of business? I'll try to provide some kind of broad uh, sort of look at um, as you learn. I think um, many of our uh, our students um, find that their faculty are using uh, this as the uh, learning management system for the university. Um, I hope that you guys are seeing this screen um, and uh, maybe as, as, as I go through this, feel free to ask uh, some questions in the chat or uh, let Juan S know if, uh, if uh, that's more convenient. Um, but if you uh, log into As You Learn with your App State uh, username and password, um, you'll uh, you'll see all of the courses that you are registered for uh, during that semester. Um, if you don't see a course right away, don't worry. Uh, sometimes uh, faculty um, don't turn it on right away, or maybe don't have it on immediately on the first day of class. But it's probably a good idea to ask, um, you know, your uh, your teachers whether they're using As You Learn for the semester. Um, I think a lot of distance ed folks are, but maybe we still have uh, some who have chosen to use a different platform. Um, if you uh, if you go to AppState.edu, um, you'll see a, a button in the uh, the corner here for accessing As You Learn uh, from this site, or you can access it from uh, just the uh, AppState um, webpage or As You Learn .edu. Uh, and then uh, as is for tech support, if you go to support.appstate.edu, uh, this is uh, the page for IT support services. Uh, it gives you the, uh, the telephone number of our help desk, uh, a link for live chatting. Uh, both of these are uh, best from uh, 8 until 5 um, on Monday uh, through Friday. But uh, one of the areas that I think a lot of our distance ed students have been able to get support because it is monitored uh, even during uh, some of the, uh, the off hours is uh, submitting a ticket, sale ticket. So if you click on the link here, uh, as a student, you can uh, sort of submit a support ticket and uh, let people know, what, uh, you know what, what issues you're running into, and then uh, you'll get, uh, you'll get uh, served as quickly as they can uh, respond to it. Um, one S, is there anything else in particular that you want me to uh, to cover? Um, no, necessarily. Um, just um, making sure that the students understand that their courses are going to be through As You Learn. Um, that is the platform that we'll use for that. Um, and I think you show them that. Um, any recommendations uh, or any tips for online students, um, Emory, that you have? Um, I think, uh, you know, you know, as you learn, of course, is going to run in, in, in a browser. So we, we don't have, um, you know, we don't have the, a specific app or, or um, platform that you must use to access it. Um, in some ways, the, uh, you know, whatever you're, uh, you're using, um, it's going to be as good as your internet connection, probably. Uh, this is also the page where you can see the service status. So if you feel like, you know, Things are running a little slow for you, whether it be Apple Net or As You Learn or, or your uh, your Google um, sort of accounts through university. You can check this page and make sure that uh, um, you get the service status update. And sometimes, if something's down or it's not running as fast, you'll see these buttons here on the side change. Um, but for uh, for As You Learn, it's it's something that uh, you know we have a lot of uh, students who um, you know use desktops, laptops mobile devices, all of that seems to run really well and, um, you know, of course, if you have any issues, uh, re report it, but, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, making sure that you're, as Dr. Roll said earlier, a lot of this is, is not so much about the technology, maybe it's just making sure that you're carving out 
uh, necessary to be a successful um, online student. And, and, and that really is, is less about the tools and more about kind of the, you know, the discipline and the, uh, the, uh, the effort that it takes to, to be successful in these areas. So I hope that covers at least uh, the bulk of, of what you sort of hoped for. Um, but that's, that's probably what I'd have to say about that. Thank you so much, Emery. That's perfect. Thank you. All right. I do have on the enrolled um, student side a little bit more information about AppleNet and As You Learn um, and some of the features that um, that you are able to see through AppleNet and As You Learn. Kelly, could you give me access to show them? So um, just just as a let me show you what AppleNet looks like. Um, you are able to access AppleNet uh, as Emery show you from the Appalachian main site. Um, so that will be the quickest way to do it. There is not the only way to do it, but it's just one of the quickest way to do it. Um, once you're put in your username and password. Uh, you will be able to log in to AppleNet. Um, I want to make sure you guys are aware that you will be using the same uh, login and password for all the different platforms that you use. So for AppleNet, for As You Learn, and then also for your email, you will be using the same password. The only difference would be for your email that you're going to be adding at appstate.edu. Other than that, you will be using the same email and password. If you have not ever logged into your account, I recommend that you use the password manager feature right here where you can reset your password. Um, so if you have never logged into the system, you're going to need to reset your password for the first time. So some of the features available within AppleNet, um, you have access to your email this way, so you can just click on the email um, icon there and it's going to take you to, to Google um, email. So we are a Google school um, and you are able to access that way. Um, you have access to the self-service tab. So during the sales service step, it's a lot of things that you can do on your own. So for example, registration, student records, student accounts, um, you will have access to your schedule. So a lot of you might be wondering, oh, I haven't been able to confirm my schedule. This is where you can see your schedule. This is also where you can see your grades, student accounts, student records, pay your bill. Um, you are able to do a bunch of stuff here. Um, also, there is a financial aid tab for those of you who have applied for financial aid. Buckley is going to talk to you a little bit about that tab right there and the features of that. I'm just going to review the web registration again uh, just to make sure that everybody is aware. This is the same process that you will be following every semester. If you go to the self-service tab and select student, you will see a, um, some services there that you have access to. You can check and see if you have any holds. Some of you are going to have holds if we don't have a final transcript. So I recommend that you touch base with me if you do have holds. Make sure you let me know who you are and also share your student ID. That way I can take a look and see how I can help you. You will register for your classes by selecting Add and Drop Classes. Once you do that, it's going to come to a screen that looks similar like this. Um, if you come across a PIN verification, uh, distance education students are not required to have that, so you let me know and then I can reset that for you. Uh, but in order to add and drop your classes, you look for the CRN number, the unique code, that we talked about, you put it in there and then you submit changes. Once you do that, it should show you that you are registered and it would show something like web register. Um, if you have questions about this process, um, let me know. Um, Emery talked to you a little bit about As You Learn and that is the platform that we will use for this particular program. 
uh, you can access through Appalachian main site like Emory show you or you can go to as you learn that appstate.edu you will be using the same credentials for that um, Google email like I said uh, we are a Google school and so your email will be from Google it will be your username at appstate.edu and the same password okay um, Buckley, do you want to talk a little bit about financial aid and, and uh, how can we assist students on financial aid? Yeah, thanks. So, um, welcome everyone. Um, I, can you see my screen? Can you see the financial aid.upstate.edu on us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. So, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. Um, First, how to uh, apply for financial aid if you haven't. Um, you would go ahead um, and complete the free application for federal student aid, and that kicks off the process um, with your information. You would enter Appalachian school code, and then um, once you complete the FAFSA, they forward your information on to us. So if you go to financialaid.appstate.edu, um, you'll see our homepage. If you have questions about financial aid, um, this is a great place to start. If you're unable to um, you know, email us or call us and you just have a quick question, um, it's pretty comprehensive. So if we click on apply, um, it would walk you through the, the process of applying and the steps that you need to take um, in order to do that. Um, there is also, um, as uh, he mentioned previously, on your AppleNet account, there's going to be a financial aid tab there once we have received um, your FAFSA information. So um, one of the things, after you complete your FAFSA, um, they will send you... Um, let me get back. Okay, so FAFSA will send you a student aid report, um, and that will just be a summary of the information that you entered and the federal aid that you're eligible to receive. Once Appalachian receives your information, if you are an in-state student, then we will go ahead and check um, for any North Carolina grants or scholarships that you're eligible to receive and then any institutional need-based aid that you might be eligible to receive. Also, on your FAFSA information and the student aid report that you receive, you will be notified by them if you have been selected for a process called verification. Verification does not mean that you've done anything incorrectly on your FAFSA. It simply means that we are charged with the responsibility of collecting some more information from you. So on your AppleNet account, once you click on the Financial Aid tab, you would see um, a tab that says Eligibility Requirements. And if you click on that tab and see additional information that we need, we will have to have that information before we can award your financial aid. So if you submitted your FAFSA and it's been a while and you haven't heard anything, Go ahead and check that eligibility requirement um, link and see if there is anything additional that we need. So for the 2016-17 um, academic year, which we are entering now, um, underneath the forms link, if you are selected for verification, you'll see all of the um, possible forms that we may be requesting from you. Um, they're all right here. We'll get back to the home page. Um, if we have any students who are coming back to school under um, any VA or um, military benefits, um, we have a contact person in our office, Jennifer Coffey, and she would be happy to help answer any questions that you have related to that. Um, I know um, there were some questions about the difference between the Office of Student Accounts and the Office of Financial Aid. So I will try and explain that. Um, the Office of Financial Aid, we receive your financial aid information or your financial information from FAFSA, and then we can determine um, 
you know, what type of need-based aid you're eligible to receive and or student loans. So our office awards that information. Student accounts is the office at Appalachian that handles accounts payable and receivable. So they are going to be the office that will put a hold on your account if you have an outstanding balance. They will be the office that you receive your bills from. They are the office that your financial aid pays to. So if you have applied and received financial aid, the financial aid, um, any loans, grants, scholarships, anything like that, will come into the office of student account. They will take a look at your account and see anything that you owe Appalachian. They will deduct that from the amount that comes in. If there is an overage, they will refund that to you. And so they will do that one of two ways, either through um, direct deposit, which I recommend that you set up, and that will go directly into your bank account. Um, the direct deposit form is also available on your AppleNet account under the self-service tab. If you scroll almost all the way to the bottom, um, then you can see that tab. And you can enter your um, checking account or, you know, bank information. Um, also, um, as far as student accounts is concerned, um, I know um, I think Juana showed you earlier um, where you can pay your bill, um, anything related to payment or um, refunds, that information um, would be found under the student account um, information on your AppleNet account. They also have, um, if you go to App State's homepage and just um, go to studentaccount.appstate.edu or S for student account. They have a comprehensive website as well. Um, we have a great um, uh, fact answer questions. Um, you know, how do I check for outstanding requirements? Just like I mentioned, if you're selected for verification, how do I accept my financial aid? Um, how do I apply or reapply for financial aid? How do I apply for scholarships? Um, you know, pretty much anything that you can think of that has to do with financial aid and a question, you're going to find that on our website. So just, you know, don't be afraid just to take a look around and see um, if you have questions. Also, um, when you accept your financial aid, you're agreeing to the terms and conditions. And I um, highly recommend that you go ahead and read those. Um, before you can accept, you do have to click a button that you have read and understood your terms and conditions. So if there are any questions about that, um, our office is happy to answer those as well. Um, Juan asks, can you think of anything else that I haven't mentioned? I cannot. Thank you, but clean. You're welcome. And just everyone, just please know that we um, are here to help, and we are glad to see that. And just welcome any questions that you have, or if you're having um, difficulty with your financial aid, please call our office. Um, our we do have a call center, and they um, are very helpful. And if they can't answer your question, they will um, forward it on to a financial aid counselor who will be in contact with you. So please don't hesitate to let us know if you have questions. We understand that financial aid can be an overwhelming process. So I um, just want you to know that you're not out there by yourself, and we're glad to answer any questions that we can. So thanks. Thank you so much, Buckley. Sure. Great information about financial aid. Um, our Right. I think now it's time for us to uh, talk a little bit about textbooks, student ID, um, and any other helpful things that um, Matt Smith can help us with. Matt, are you in the call? Hi, Matt. We can hear you just a little if you don't mind speaking up. Okay. Good. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's uh, good to see everyone here on this call. We're going to talk about three items real quickly. Uh, search engine, textbooks, and app card. Uh, the number one tool that I use every day um, helping students is the uh, the search engine on the appstate.edu webpage, top right hand corner. 
Uh, if you're if you heard something that Buckley was talking about and you wanted to, you couldn't remember where to find that, you can type in distance education financial aid and you can hit ser the search magnifying glass on the right side and it'll bring you to a page look looking similar to this. And then you can choose from a list of, of areas there that uh, to find the information that you're looking for. Again, this is probably the most uh, utilized tool that I use every day and it's, it's very helpful uh, looking for information throughout the website and, uh, and the university. The second thing that we want to discuss briefly, uh, and I've, I've talked to several students already about this, is our textbooks. So in order to uh, find your textbooks, you'll go to bookstore.appstate.edu and you'll so select the, uh, the textbook item there in, in the gold ribbon. Once you select the textbooks uh, menu button, it'll bring you to a, a page that looks similar to this. You'll want to scroll down. First of all, there's a student ID and term section there. Uh, that that uh, area is for the main campus students, so it's not been, uh, we don't utilize it in distance education. But when you scroll down, your page will look similar to this here. Uh, as you can see, um, in steps one through uh, five, you select your, the courses uh, that you're looking for with the textbooks. Uh, and in section number six, you can see where I've uh, selected the three courses you'll need for the fall semester. Nursing 3000, uh, 3011, and 3021. And when you get that list uh, together for your small, um, your fall courses, uh, you just hit number seven, choose books. And once you choose books, it'll take you to a, a page that looks similar to this. Um, as you can see, the first, the first course, uh, Nursing 3000, uh, there's three uh, textbooks that, that you need for this course, um, and then so on and so forth for the next, the next uh, three, two classes. But the main thing that you're looking for is the SKU number under each textbook. You can buy them from the university bookstore, uh, new or used. Uh, renting is not an option uh, for us in distance education at the, at the bookstore. But the main thing is you take that SKU number and then you can go to Amazon.com, Google, uh, and put that SKU number in there and it will pull up um, different websites that show uh, where you can find the textbook that you're looking for. There's some things to consider when you're doing that, though. When you're looking on the online sites, is uh, shipping costs. Do they charge you for shipping back? Some people do, some people don't. Uh, just look for those additional fees. Um, you can consider ebooks as a as a cost savings option as well. But the main thing you want to look for are reputable sites, uh, sites that have the Better Business Bureau logo, uh, um, eTrust or trustee certification. And the main thing is. Look for what other students in the past have said about this site. They may have comments, um, whether they're a good site to use, a reputable site, uh, and they're easy to work with. So those are the main things you want to look at when you're looking at choosing textbooks. Um, the last thing I want to discuss is the app card. The app card is the official university identification. Um, every student is issued an app card. Uh, they're used for different campus access uh, here on campus or um, in the UNC um, system as well at the other uh, campuses, also library services, um, and you can also use this app card for student discounts. My favorite, of course, is uh, going to the movie theater and getting a discount on popcorn on Friday night, so uh, we'll use it for that. But if you do lose it, there's a $15 charge for that uh, to get that replaced. And also, if you visit um, either the main campus here in Boone or one of our centers in uh, Burke County, Colorado, or Hickory, you can have a photo taken. Uh, if you do that on the, one of the centers at Burke Hall or, or Hickory, I would suggest calling the number, make an appointment, make sure there's someone there that can uh, take care of that for you. And all your app cards, um, if you don't get your picture taken, there's nothing you need to do. It'll be mailed to your primary address uh, that you have listed in my, my app account. So if you have any questions, um, just let us know. I look forward to seeing um, a smile like this on your face next December as well. So thank you, Juan. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. I love that picture because that's certainly how our students look after they finish their program. So thank you. Um, all right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about support services and all the wonderful things that we have to offer for you. Um, we are bringing the library to you, and Kelly and John can help us to learn more about that. Um, Kelly and John? Hi. Um, oh, I'll turn that off. Um, hey, uh, I'm John Wiswell from the library. Uh, I'm the librarian for nursing. 
Um, you've heard Kelly McAllister's voice, um, and she's organized this. She's the librarian for uh, distance education services. Uh, so you've got two uh, big advocates in the library. Uh, let me just start out by um, talking. Let me just talk a moment about why I'm talking today. Uh, I mean, you're going to have your as you learn set up, um, and you're going to have a lot of content in there, and you're going to have your textbooks, and you'll probably get some assigned readings and as you learn. But before long, uh, your faculty are going to be sending you out to look for articles uh, on nursing concepts, nursing theory, and especially to get evidence about. Um, um, health and healthcare, and evidence is articles, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And we're also offering some workshops soon, uh, just about how to find them a little better. So again, my name is John Wiswell. Uh, Kelly McAllister is also serving distance education students. Um, so you can get help from both of us. Uh, we also have a lot of other people here in the library who um, you know, can do a lot of things for you. If you go here to ask a librarian, um, it'll bring up a page like this, and you can see there are a lot of ways to, to reach us. I think a lot of your more content-oriented questions, uh, you're going to want to email me directly. But if something's not working or you don't know how to do something, that's really good. And uh, this chat is pretty good, too. Um, for instance, I've spent a lot of this week uh, responding to questions in chat. And if you just type in a question, you know, how do you get this article? Or, you know, I'm having a problem. Um, you know, a lot of times we have somebody respond to that. We can help you pretty quickly. So, um, so you can contact me directly, Kelly, and I'll show you our contact information here in a few minutes. But um, there are a lot of ways to get help. And of course, we really want the library website, uh, the library resources, to be kind of self-serve most of the time. Doesn't always work. So. Um, here's the library website. It's library.appstate.edu. If you're um, if you're on the Appalachian State website, uh, here's a link right here. Uh, so there are a lot of ways to get there. Uh, we also have a guide that gets a lot of traffic, and it should be in your as you learn. I'm not going to show you how to find it. By the way, uh, just as Matt was saying on the Appalachian site, there's a search. Uh, we have one on the library site, and so if I click that, it brings up this. You know, I typed in nursing and databases for nursing, the guide I, I'm just mentioning for nursing, uh, along with some other historical stuff. So right up at the top, you know, so that works pretty well uh, for the library site too, the search. Um, I'm going to show you, um, I want to show you this. All article databases, because I want you. I'm going to want you to go this route a lot of the time. And now, if you already know you want to go to CINAHL, which starts with a C, you can go here. Uh, but a lot of times, I like to just go to nursing and CINAHL, which I'm going to talk about a little bit, and PubMed are pretty important. And also, uh, I don't really want to see my photo, but here's my contact information, so that might be useful to you uh, if you want to send me an email about how something works. Um, and I can do, uh, you know, consultations, uh, you know, um, I can set up a web conference like this, um, you know, so I can do quick questions and longer questions. So anyway, here's CINAHL, uh, here's my contact information. Um, let me also just note on our main library page, and I'll go back through that again, but we have a button for distance education. And um, it's got a lot of information about library services for um, for you, and it's also got Kelly McAllister's picture and her contact information. So I like that. Uh, but one thing I'm not going to talk about are books uh, because we're mostly going to be uh, needing articles. But we do have uh, electronic books, which are kind of a nuisance, but are but are you know really good uh, for quick. Uh, quick information, but we also have a system for delivering books to you. Uh, so, uh, and I don't want to talk about it, but it's there. Uh, you can find out more on this, on that page. Uh, so again, it's right here in the middle of our library page. So again, I'm going to come back here and uh, click on all article databases and go to nursing. And I'm going to enter CINAHL. When I hit CINAHL, it's going to look like this. Um, but when you hit send off from off campus, uh, you're going to be asked to log in. 
it's going to look like, nope, that's not the one. <laughs> Where'd it go? Uh, it's going to look like this. This isn't how you get there, but you're going to get a page that looks like this. Now, I've checked uh, uh, some, of the, the, some of you and uh, seen that your status looks like it's okay in the library and your setup. You know, and if you're, you're getting into As You Learn and your email, you should be able to get into our library resources, and they should work just as well for you as they would for somebody on campus. Uh, but you have to be able to get through this. So you need to put in your username and your password, just like you would for email or As You Learn, and that should get you in. Now, one of the reasons I'm spending a little extra time on this is because some students are having an obstacle at this point. And uh, so one option uh, is to reset your password. Sorry, it's a nuisance. Come back in a few minutes and try this again. Um, it seems like there's a little bit of a communication problem between uh, the university system and the library system. So uh, I'm sorry about that. Another option that should last through your whole time in this program, though, is try this. Uh, if it doesn't work, take everything out and start on this side. And you can use your full name or you can just use your last name. And you've got something you might be familiar with at this point, the banner ID number. It's a nine-digit number. You can look it up in AppleNet. Uh, I don't want to look it up with you right now, but if you go into AppleNet, uh, into self-service, uh, you can look up your banner ID number. And so anyway, if you put in that, that uh, digit nine-digit number and your name and you don't have any marks over here, that should get you in every time. And really, if you want to just use this, uh, you can. But it's hard to, it might be harder to remember your banner ID number through the year. So, uh, but anyway, that's an option. I really, uh, it's really important you be able to get through this obstacle. If you are having continuing problems, uh, Kelly and I would like to know um, and if you can describe what the problem is. Um, so I did work with a student a couple of days ago, and, and we had that problem here, and we just switched over to this side, and it was no problem. We were able to talk about it. So let's look at, um, let me take a look and see if we have any questions. Okay. I don't know how to answer that about the name, so I'm going to keep going for now. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you uh, right now is um, workshops. I'm going to do a couple of workshops that are going to focus uh, a, a little more extensively on CINAHL and a little bit with PubMed. Uh, one of them is Tuesday the 16th, 8 to 9 p.m. And the second one is Friday, next Friday, the same time slot, uh, August 19th, 10 to 11. Uh, so if you want to register, um, I've got some um, some links right here. Uh, you can really wait and register at the last minute. And when you get this link, you see the, this uh, guide in um, your As You Learn. Uh, you should be able to find this. Uh, and by the way, I've got a bunch of messages at the top of this guide, but uh, the real key here is just another link to send all uh, my contact information, a few things like that. So again, uh, let me show this to you now. Tuesday, August 16th. 8 to 9 p.m. and Friday, August 19th, 10 to 11. Uh, but I can also do appointments one-on-one, -on -one, small group. Um, you know, I can do that in October if that's what you want. So uh, just let me know. Okay, back to CINAHL. Um, CINAHLs really should be pretty easy. Um, let's just say um, a CINAHL is a nursing and allied health database for finding articles. Um, and uh, the N in CINAHL is nursing, the AH is allied health. Uh, so it's really a good fit for, for your program. So um, let's just try, uh, say we were interested in the concept of telenursing. I don't know if that's what we're really interested in, but it's a good example. Um, and you get results like this. Some of you, if you've been in, uh, uh, in academic programs recently, this might look pretty familiar. We've got a lot of databases with this same interface. Uh, when this comes up, of course, you're going to be scanning to see if this is really what you want. Maybe you don't want something. This is in Australia right here. Maybe you don't want, maybe you'd rather not start with something focusing on Australia. Um, you know, whatever. But um, 
if you see something you like, and it's got the red and white PDF full text, or the red and white linked full text. If it's got that red and white and full text, it should open up every time. And all you have to do is click here, and it should open up your article. And you can see if it works for you, if that's one you want to use or not. Now, this is really important. We've had a lot of misunderstanding about this. If you see the yellow Find That ASU button, it doesn't necessarily mean we have it, but it means it's going to try and find you an electronic version of it. It's going to work the same on campus as it does off campus. So I forget if this is going to work or not. If I click the button, sometimes we don't have it, uh, and you'll get a message like this. We do have a system to get this from other libraries, and occasionally if you're looking for something older, we'll have it in paper. And we have delivery systems to get you these too. But generally, you're not going to need that. Uh, one thing I would do if I really wanted this article is I'd also check on the web and uh, look for it there. And let me just show you. Uh, by the way, App Search is really good, and I use Google Scholar to find full text, and Google Scholar is quite good for a lot of things too. So that's one thing I would do before I gave up on that. You know, if you really needed it, we could get it delivered to you, but it also might be on the web. Uh, let's just try one more and see how it works uh, uh, a lot of times also. Yeah, I believe we have this journal. So if I click on Find That ASU. It's coming up in the next uh, window, and it's kind of slow. Yeah, this set of journals is kind of slow, but it does come up. Uh, this is giving me a, you know, uh, this version, but if I'd rather have PDF with a page view, there's a button right here. So just remember, if you see the Find A at ASU button, that doesn't mean it's only available on campus. It's supposed to be available to you if we have a, if we have a subscription. Uh, you know, um, also a couple more things. A lot of times for your assignments, your um, your instructors are going to want you to use academic journals, so you can click here. A lot of times they're going to want you to only use the last five years, so that's two things you might be using pretty heavily right here. So the dates and the academic journals. There are a lot of things you can do, um, and I'll talk about it more in the workshops, but I think that's probably more than enough. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say, and I have been talking for a while. Are there any questions? Okay, I see one question, and I don't know if I can really deal with it right now, but it's an important question. The question is, I just tried logging in with my banner number, and it did not work. All the other fields were empty. Um, I would make sure that when you put your name on that, uh, on that side of the, the login page, uh, you got your name right. You wouldn't want to use your username in that case. You're switching over to that alternative method. You want to use your first and last name, or you want to just even use your last name. Uh, I kind of doubt that's the problem, though. If you want to uh, contact me and or Kelly, um, we'll you know we'll try and work it out with you. Uh, so let me just go back again, and here is my email address. Uh, I'm here in my office right now. Um, I'm also probably going to be on the chat a lot today. Um, so if you want to contact me or Kelly, I'll try to work that through with you. So I'm sorry about the obstacle. Um, so I'm glad we're talking about it now. Any other questions? Kelly, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I definitely think you got it all covered. Um, just know that the uh, library itself is open during the semester on a 25 or 24-5 schedule, which means we're open 24 hours on Sunday through Thursday, and then the library is open from 7.30 to 9 on Friday, and we're open from 10 to 6 on Saturday. Um, but there are always professional librarians and staff there that can take your questions. And the chat is monitored through NC Knows, which means um, you're getting libraries from across the state of North Carolina that are watching that. So if you guys are working on your papers late, there's there's always somebody there that can help you. So definitely take advantage of that, the chat box and contacting the library. Yeah, and I, I don't work 24-7, uh, but I'm often, um, I've often responded to emails through, uh, you know, over the weekend. Somebody will send me a email question on 
Friday night and you know maybe I'll see it before I go to bed or when I get up in the morning and we'll exchange emails through the weekend so and then there are people in the building for much of the weekend too so um, we don't just completely shut down over the weekend which I know probably a lot of you will do some of your work then all right well uh, thank you and thank you Kelly and, and Juan and um, I look forward to working with y'all good luck Thank you so much, John. We appreciate all you do, and um, also the uh, specific webinars are really, really good. So I encourage you uh, guys to access one of those. Um, also, Kelly has um, different ones as well for distance ed students. So I encourage you to definitely take the time to sign up for one of them. Um, attending a webinar is, is just so helpful just to give you all the inside details on library services that you will be using a lot. Um, all right, with us today we have Marcia Clay from Career Services Office. Uh, she will be talking to you a little bit about the services that they have available through the Career Development uh, Center. Hi, it's great to be with all of you today. Uh, as Juan has said, my name is Marcia Clay and I am the career counselor that works specifically with the Beaver College of Health Sciences. So I am your career counselor. Just to give you an idea of some of the different things that we do in the Career Center, and you have access to almost all of these via email and via our website as well. So you can get in and do that. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, it looks great. Thank okay. you. Okay, good. I just want to make sure it's not showing up on my alone. That's great. Okay. Um, one of the things that we can help you do is discover, identify, market your transferable skills. You're already RNs. So we can look at how that feeds into what you want to do and how that's going to fit with your BSN, how you can market some of those transferable skills, and perhaps if you work someplace else. Uh, then we can look at marketing those as well and how you list those on your resume, how all that's going to fit. Uh, we can help you do some career researching and job with job hunting strategies. Where do you look for a job? Where do you want to live? Do you want to stay where you are right now? Those types of things. Or are you willing to move? Or are you looking to move? If you want to go to California, how are you going to get there? What you know? What kind of? How do you even start looking for a job? Those kind of things. So we can help with that. We help with some career networking, of course, with LinkedIn. If you're not already on LinkedIn, we recommend that you do that that you get on LinkedIn. It's a great opportunity to network with people all over the country, all over the area that are in the field that you're looking to go into and to look at getting information from them. We also take professional photographs here, but you have to come on campus to do that. So if you happen to be at App State, you come in on campus, if you let me know ahead of time, we can make arrangements to do that. We also work with or look at resumes, cover letters. Um, you can do that via email with me and I'll show you my email address here in just a minute. But if you email your resume to me or your cover letters to me, I'm more than happy to review them for you and then email them back to you with any suggestions, recommendations that I have. Internships, clinical consultations, um, we have people that we bring on campus for different things. Um, there are opportunities to do some of that. You're really not required to do internships because you're already working and uh, if you're required to do any clinical rotations, those are taken care of through the nursing school. So we don't really get involved in that with nursing students, but we do with many others or if there's something else you want to do. For example, I had a student not long ago that was interested in doing something in public health and wanted to do that internationally. So she was able to arrange an internship in Switzerland with the National Health Organization, or not national, but the International Health Organization in Switzerland. So that's a possibility, looking at those. Graduate and professional school preparation. If you are interested in going on for your um, MSM, then we can help you with looking at that. Or if you want to become a nurse practitioner or looking at some other things, we can help you with graduate school preparation. One of the things that we do have in March is our um, Health Careers Expo, and it's always in the spring. It's generally the end of March, and we have between 50 and 60 different grad schools that are here. 
and you have an opportunity to come in and talk with them. Now that is done on campus, so you would need to be able to get to our campus at App State in order to be able to do that. But if you're interested, I can certainly give you more information. There will be a lot more on our website as the time as it gets closer. And then the last one we'll talk a little bit about is interview stream. And that is a way to do some practice interviewing. It's an online program. You just go into, if you go into our website, there's a connection with interview stream. And there's already questions set up in there. You choose, or you can choose your own questions if you want to. And it will ask you questions. You give answers. Then it plays it back for you. And you get an opportunity to review it. And I tell people all the time that this is something that is just for you to see unless you want to give someone else access to it. We don't post it on YouTube or anything. So um, it's just an opportunity for you to practice interviewing. So it also does some interesting things in that it counts how many times you say um and ah. You get an opportunity to see if you have any nonverbal behaviors that you're doing because it does uh, record you. So it's just kind of a neat way of being able to practice interviewing if you want to brush up a little bit on your interviewing skills. This is my picture just so you have an idea of who it is you're talking to when you call me or when you email me. But my email address is clayml at appstate.edu. And like I said, I highly recommend that you email me anytime you have a question, anytime that there's something career related that you'd like some information about. Or if you want to call, you can certainly call our telephone number. It's there as well. Uh, does anyone, if anyone has any questions, I can try to answer those. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it back over to one is. Thank you so much, Marsha. Sure. Um, and and Marsha, that is something that I hear pretty often from students. Some of them coming back to school after a while. So it's always nice to have you know updated resume and updated um, information and also having a, a present on social media nowadays is very important so thank you for for sharing that information all right so the next presenters that we have are from the College of Health Sciences we have Mr. Matt Crump and Dr. Kathleen Raymond the chair of the nursing program uh, Matt and Kathleen I leave you to it Thank you. One as um, Matt and I are sharing this session, so I'll start out with some information that we would like you to know from the Department of Nursing, and then I'll turn it over to Matt, and he can share some information from the advisement standpoint. First of all, welcome to all of you. Uh, it's wonderful to be in touch with you over the distance. Uh, as our newest group of RN to BSN students. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about the Department of Nursing so that you know that you're connected with um, us here on campus and what we're about and what you're a part of. And so we have three programs in the Department of Nursing and one is the RN to BSN program, as you know, which you have applied and been accepted to. The other program is a pre-licensure BSN, which is a four-year BSN degree. And then starting this fall, uh, actually this Sunday, we start with orientation for our MSN in nursing education. So we have that program beginning and have our first cohort of students. And they're also um, going to be, like you all, in a program that is totally online. So we're very excited about that opportunity. Our RN to BSN program is in its 11th year this year, started in 2006 as an on-ground program and then transitioned in 2010 to online. So you are the sixth online cohort that we've had. So we have faculty that are very used to teaching in the online environment and a lot of supports um, from ASU as you've heard through this orientation this morning. So we're very happy to be part of this initiative and to be able to offer the program to working professionals. The program is designed for nurses who work um, and you take, if you look at the program of study that's on our website, you take 11 credits for two semesters in the fall and spring and then eight credits in the summer 
and that comprises your 30 credits with us uh, of your nursing courses. So it's a three semester program starting this fall and it concludes in summer. So you'll be finishing up and graduating if you stay on track in summer of 2017 and then you will go to the December graduation and we'll have a pinning ceremony for you then as well. After the completion of your spring semester, 30 credit hours are applied to your transcript and those are ASU credits that you receive um, as a part of being a working professional. So that's a way of giving credit for your work expertise. <clears throat> wanted to give you some strategies for success, um, but before I do that, let me just tell you a little bit about our faculty. We have 14 faculty in the Department of Nursing, and all of our full-time tenure-track faculty are doctorally prepared. In addition, we have three clinical faculty that are full-time, and several of them have certifications in nursing education. So our faculty are very qualified. Uh, and we'll be working with you and look forward to working with you in this upcoming academic year. To be successful, there are some strategies that we believe as a faculty have really served our students well, and I wanted to share those with you. And these have been mentioned before, so I'm reiterating and emphasizing the strategies for success. And one of those is to check your email frequently we communicate with you through your ASU email. That's what we're required to do. So you really must get your email up and running if you haven't already done that and begin to get yourself in the habit of checking it very frequently, probably at least once a day. Um, you want to also get into the As You Learn site and check the courses that you're taking, those three courses that are listed that one has uh, talked about previously for this semester and those are NUR 3000, NUR 3011, and NUR 3021. And those are nursing informatics, concepts of professional nursing, and health assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's your course load for the fall semester. You want to get in there, take a look at those courses, familiarize yourself with the As You Learn platform so that you're very, very uh, familiar and able to get around within the courses. Uh, in terms of personal strategies for success, what I would say is one of the most important ones is to plan ahead and allow more time than you think you'll need to complete your assignments and requirements and to submit things on time. It often takes, when you're coming back to school, a little more time than you would have imagined. And sometimes being an online learner has its own set of learnings in terms of getting oriented. So you want to plan ahead and allow more time. The other thing is to pace yourself because, um, as several of the presenters have mentioned, there are things that are different about coming back to school as an adult learner and as a professional. And life doesn't stop when you're in school. So you have to pace yourself and allow for the fact that you probably might get tired sooner than you did when you were in your earlier degree. That comes with age. And it also comes with the online environment in some ways. It has a very different set of requirements of, of us sort of physically, emotionally, and mentally. So allow some time for that. You want to stay up with your deadlines. That's really critical in this program um, and submit things on time uh, at, as are required within your courses. So check those deadlines, set yourself a schedule, pace yourself with your work, um, and stay up with things. The one thing that you do not want to do is disappear in your courses. So if something happens um, in your life, you need to let your faculty know right away so that they can strategize and problem solve with you and see what the options are and what the alternatives are. Um, what you don't want to do is not contact your faculty because sometimes students um, get overwhelmed with what's happening in life and feel like they can just pick up at some point and resume their coursework and in the meantime have missed important deadlines or have 
miss the opportunity to try to interact with faculty and come up with some ways that you might be able to continue in the course that would meet um, the expectations for the course and the course outcomes and also allow you to figure out you know what's happening in life uh, so you need to collaborate with your faculty in those instances so contact your faculty if there's a problem or some kind of life event that comes up respond to the emails from your faculty don't ignore those don't let those go unanswered and be sure to discuss your options um, one other thing that I would direct you to is the student handbook that is on our web page um, please take some time to go through that and read the parts that are especially important to you because that handbook is your handbook as an online learner just the same as it is with our on-ground students so all of those policies apply and they give you direction about what to do if something comes up and that's what we will be referring to if you're contacting us in case of a problem or an issue we want you to know that you can expect to have rigorous courses and that you need to be able to make a time commitment outside of your courses and usually a good rule of thumb is probably about nine hours per three hour course is what people will tell you so if you take three courses a semester it's really almost like having two jobs so you have a job probably full-time in your workplace and then with this curriculum with three courses, it's a significant amount of time outside, um, you know, specifically being in a course for certain kinds of things. So you need to recognize that and plan for it um, and know that your faculty are here to assist you, to support you, uh, and that we're very, very familiar with the online environment, with online teaching, and also with professional um, people who come back to be our students so those are the kinds of things that I wanted to share with you and I'll be happy to take some questions at the end here um, after Matt has had a chance to speak with you so now I would like to turn the session over to Matt Crump who is our uh, advisor for the Beaver Colleges of Health Sciences specific to nursing so Matt the floor is yours awesome thank you um, again, we're excited to have you all uh, part of this cohort and uh, just kind of want to rest, recap some things for, for me and the advising office here at Appalachian. Um, I am your academic advisor. So, things that are going on in your life uh, and with class, policy and procedures, anything related to school, please let me know um, to where we can help you uh, so you can be successful um, in this program. I do want to show you our um, College of Health Sciences webpage. Um, this is going to have information on policies and procedures, um, a bunch of different things, uh, links to forms. Um, I just want to show you my information. Um, it's located uh, under the student tab. Um, if you click on our staff, this should take you to, um, well, clicking too much here. Uh, our link to our staff here. I'm the third person down. Um, this is going to give you my information, uh, phone, fax, email. You'll be getting emails from me periodically throughout the semester, um, just kind of checking in and giving you uh, information and things. But if you do need to contact me, that's my information. Um, I also request that you, you do email me or call me um, if anything is going on. Uh, I think it's very important that you communicate with us um, in any way you can. Um, I also suggest that if you have taken a class this summer or last semester, or for some crazy reason this fall, that we get a transcript immediately. Um, it is going to prevent you from graduating and moving forward in the program. Uh, we need that transcript. Um, and if you want to let me know what's going on with that, it's not coming in, we do request that you send that to us so we can get uh, credit for your classes. Um, that is very important, top priority, um, that you get that transcript into us so we can get you some classes and you don't want to have a graduation shortage um, come next summer and you not be able to graduate. Um, so that's kind of about all I have. Uh, just the transcripts is top priority for us and then being in communication uh, with me and with your nursing faculty. 
Um, also, we point out that if you request that I call you at a certain time, or that you know a better time for you to talk to me would be at a certain time during the day, I'm more than happy to accommodate you with that, or if you just want to send me an email, any way that we can get in contact, uh, more than happy to accommodate you there, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, Matt and Dr. Raymond, for those great uh, advice for the students. So uh, we are getting close to concluding today's orientation program. I wanted to give you the opportunity to have um, a little bit um, of the people who are here to support you through the program. This is not everybody. We have tons of people who are in registration, advising, um, just facilitate conversations to help you, to better serve you. If you come across any concerns, any questions, you're certainly welcome to contact um, me or any of the people that we talked today. We are willing uh, to help you or to guide you at least to the right person if we can help. Um,